uh, what call that uh, sort of uh, warning for us to look into more uncertainty uh, that is coming uh, across for the GBP versus dollar on the medium term. On the daily chart, we have got uh, more uncertainty on the daily chart or the long term for the pound versus the dollar. Okay. Um, Within the Brexit, I mean, we'll discuss this tomorrow on part three of the um, of the um, geopolitical trader series. Uh, we have got loads of uncertainty. Now, uncertainty itself is actually mixed up with a bit of fear by investors. So, investors are actually being uncertain. They would actually pull prices or the uh, pound uh, lower. Okay, and that is uh, how the business uh, world works. If you've got uncertainty, uncertainty, it's not seen as positive at all. So that would usually lean towards uh, negativity or fear and uh, all negative sort of emotions by investors. And that usually pulls prices down. Okay, so here itself we've got prices in within on the long term. You can see loads of uncertainty because we've got these three lines, three EMAs, prices are in between these three lines, not a good sign. So um, you've got a bit of an indication of a range. That means if you, if you could actually look at for the long term, that area there marked by the purple line at 1.4721 or 4720 area, which is a psychological area, and this lower line here, 1.4419, or again it's 4420, that is another psych level, okay? So we have got this range here, okay, marked by this square area here, which would be significant um, uh, price zones, which actually mean that if we are conservative enough, uh, we can actually get more confidence with prices breaking above to mark it to the upside or here to mark it on the downside okay or bearish area so that it, that gives you an idea but now what we're doing in shorter time frame is to trade in within this range okay so that's for the pound uh, versus the dollar let's move on to GBP uh, JPY or the pound versus the yen let's look into this give me a second all right, let's look into this. For those who have actually asked me earlier this morning on the pound yen, uh, let's just uh, start with the basics. Let's uh, always minimize it and look into angles and look into how far candles or prices have actually moved either under all the three EMA or exponential moving averages, uh, average lines or above them. As you can see on the one hour, we've got prices crossed all three coming downward. So that is giving us a bit of an idea that the moment momentum is on the downside for the pound versus the yen okay uh, if you've actually looked into if you've actually looked into uh, the uh, Yahoo Finance News you know the first thing in the morning you go on to Yahoo Finance News you type that onto Google you look into the currency center table you could see that uh, as of today we have got let me just uh, get that one out as of today let's say on the market data area okay You go on to currencies, okay, and uh, once, uh, what I usually do is I find it easier when I click onto the yen crosses, okay. Click onto the yen crosses, I have got uh, loads of negatives here under the percentage change column, okay, and that gives me an idea that yen is on the strong side, on the bullish side because all other currencies versus the yen are on the negative side so that gives strength to the to the yen so yen is seen to have appreciated in value or to the upside okay it gives you a bit of an idea so if we go on to here so yen is on the upside hence the reason we're looking at more downside for the pound okay and we have got some momentum look at the prices here 158.44.44 that area we're looking at prices under the 50 site number so that gives that uh, definitely giving giving us uh, some hints that there are more uh, likelihood for prices to travel even lower we have got uh, the angle here itself okay we've got an angle like that let's see right so you've got an angle this way right 
we've got an angle that is um, sort of from the five o'clock to five o'clock uh, it's past four o'clock five o'clock onwards so that's giving more strength to the downside for the pound okay and that's under 50 already is actually moving down so this is giving us more hints that they are more likelihood to the downside for the pound versus the dollar okay now here itself if I pull that one here all right pull that one here and I put that across we have got uh, I thought to have a bit of a a uh, how do you call that a clue or hint of a Z like pattern here okay but that usually ends around here to be a Z pattern meaning that prices would actually go up bounce off from here upwards okay but that didn't happen that actually shows us that there are more strength uh, to the downside because the bears are actually being dominant and you could actually look at at the dominance of bears or bearishness from just the the way the candle works okay you've got all the candles look at the candles here and if we actually um, maximize that or, or zoom in you could see that from that move from that move at the very top right down here as it actually uh, goes further you could see more bearish candles have appeared and you've got more uh, longish bigger candles so that gives us more hint that the pound is getting weaker and weaker it's got more bearish candles okay now it and the other thing as well is that it uh, the the Z like pattern actually fails. so usually the Z pattern would end up here and then bounce up it didn't actually bounce up it came lower instead so again that's another confirmation that the pound is getting weaker versus the yen okay so now I will zoom uh, I'll just take off that failed pattern there just to confirm prices usually ends up at the 50 area here so it didn't actually end there it went lower and went under it as well okay so let's just get rid of all that now let's just uh, quickly go into the four hour chart four hour chart and look into how prices are behaving at this moment of time okay we have got entanglement uh, entanglement meaning that these three EMA or exponential moving averages they're actually just being entangled and they are not free from each other okay the one here you have got all three EMAs are actually apart from each other meaning that they are actually far apart from each other giving you a lot of signal um, okay that they are clear the directions clear here is a little bit of um, uncertainty going on okay with the pound versus the yen now we have got prices coming in between these three lines at the moment they are not under or above so there's a lot of um, uncertainty uh, going on now we are looking at um, in terms of let's just do it this way on the four hour chart as you can see we have got a sort of angle here okay we've got from this very top right down there we've got a sort of four o'clock not really five o'clock or six o'clock four o'clock so we we may be looking at a bit of appreciation of the pound in the medium term okay in the medium term because we're looking at the four hour chart at the moment all right that also is giving us an idea why we're looking at a bit of a upward move expected because we have got the order flow the order flow meaning that you're looking at just the lows we have got the lows here correct lows here lows here lows here another low here and more low coming up here that means we've got higher lows all right that higher lows itself is giving us a bit of an order flow to the upside okay it's actually rising up at the moment going uh, upwards okay so that is on the medium uh, term let's look into the price at the moment okay in terms of price we've got one five eight five eight point four six now it's a bit risky here because four six is really close to the point fifty 50 site number so we want prices to rise a little bit more let's wait a little bit if you are on onto an uh, upward move or um, into the buy position for the GBP versus the yen it's probably best for us to 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 wait a little bit until prices go above the 50 meaning 158.60 or so to look into more confidence to the upside okay and perhaps once you have 
seen that upward move only after you you see that it's more confident to the upside you can then draw a sort of uh, a b c d pattern starting from here okay a and then you got b you got c so your c you have actually reached at a 78.6 area okay meaning if if at all we're looking at a potential to the upside for the pound we're talking about the four hour chart then there there is a possibility of prices reaching right up to this area here okay now that is basically me drawing the ABCD pattern from there that's your A to B and then your B to C here okay we take that AB equals CD to project or predict where D could potentially go right so we have let me just adjust that a little bit there okay now we have got an a b to c d potentially okay but we're not doing anything just now because it's actually quite risky we're looking at prices coming downwards here and then they're in between these three lines okay now what we can then do is to pull a fibonacci as well because the c is at 78.6 if i pull my b to my c i'm looking at the potential of prices reaching right up to 127.2 okay area so that is a potential but when do we actually enter what what are the ideal or would the ideal entry price be now what you do then is that once you've got an a b c d you've projected the d to be either 16481 area to 16525 area okay you can then convert this into a geometric sort of pattern whereby we attach the a to the d okay and then we look into the middle sort of point okay so that is signaling to us that if at all we wish to enter it's probably best to enter ideally above 158 to it and above okay so uh, it's best for us to get 10 pips above the uh, uh, 20 site number here because 28 is closest to your 20 so if we adjust that right we do that as 158 point 30 and above and we can actually then enter a buy but it's probably best for us to actually aim higher at 158.60 that's above the 50 site number to actually be a little safer okay for you to actually increase your probability and lower your risk a little bit more okay just to, to do that now once you see prices at this area here look left okay look left and look at areas that could pose a significant support resistant area we have got that peak there okay we have got price concentration here for example got some price concentration okay price concentration there all right so what i'll do then is i'll create a zone a support resistance zone okay i'll take the body of that candle there and i'll just mark the wick there okay i don't need to mark that wick there because it's actually quite close to price now so i'll just leave that as it is and have that zone so this is actually quite a uh, a significant zone all right now this significant zone here what it tells me is that uh, it probably be best for you as a trader if you want to enter a buy on gbpjby our four hour chart it's probably best for you to wait for price to go above the 15870 area and above of course 70 is too close to the 80 so we are looking at 80 and above so 158.90 would probably be an ideal uh, 158 okay for 90 this is for those who are actually looking at uh, an, a potential entry based on the four hour chart here okay and we're looking at 15890 of course if you're looking at potential for the upside and you want to actually trade for the short term you simply go on to lower time frames and look for opportunities there okay so that is basically an idea for you on a GBP JPY for those wanting to trade on a medium term short to medium term okay based on that price there all right so that is an area that we're looking at on the GBP uh, JPY let's just uh, clear off this one here erase all drawings all right let's uh, look into pairs that um, 
quite a number of you guys are actually curious to know. Let's talk about uh, non-currency related ones. Let's focus on to gold and oil. Let's just go on to gold first before we uh, cover the other currency pairs, okay? Now, at this stage, we're looking at uh, gold here. I would like to just give you the complicated version and then I'll simplify it with another chart later on. Okay, we're looking to XAU USD or gold uh, on the four hour chart. Now this is what I've actually drawn some time ago, a couple of weeks ago. I've, see, I've seen some symmetry, I've seen some distance or sorry the length of uh, trend to be similar between this length, this length and the foregoing length. Okay, so there's a bit of a three drive move. I, I have expected prices to actually bounce off uh, any time due to a M like pattern here. Okay, but uh, they seem to be some challenges because we see more dominance of the bearish candles, a more, more depreciation of the goal. But let's simplify matter okay by looking into the goal uh, chart on the one hour chart first. Let us now go on to the trend line. Okay. Uh, sorry, the uh, moving average, and we'll start off with the 50, okay, and then the 100. Let's look at it from the basics of things. All right, got a 100 there, and then the 200. Moving average, that's the exponential, guys, okay. Now, let's now just go on to there. Oops. 200 here, sorry. All right, now we've got all three lines. Now, the good thing about all these three lines is that they're far apart from one another. It gives you a nice distance between them, which is a good, clear signal that they are moving downwards. You've got more strength for gold to the downside. Okay, now the angle itself here, this angle here, Okay, on the short term, it, it is giving us a five o'clock sort of angle, which also means that, again, confirmation more to the downside for gold. So it's not yet just time to buy for gold. It may probably is for some longer term traders who would like to go in as early as possible. But that is also because they could uh, withstand the correction, meaning that you would need to be uh, very much focused on your liquidity, on your, uh, on your margin, on your equity to be able to write um, huge corrections. If you are on a downside and, and, and if you are on, a, on an upside uh, move for the gold and wish to actually participate in a buy, make sure you are um, using the time frames in accordance to your equity. Okay, because a lot of uh, traders would actually ask, how do I actually, you know, I, I want to trade um, and I'm trading with the four hour or the daily chart, but then I, I have started only with about a couple of hundred US dollars. And that might actually pose a risk for you from the very start. Okay, because we do actually expect some uh, whipsaws, we expect a lot of choppiness. So here itself, as you can see, we have got candles, okay, moving uh, under all three uh, lines all three uh, moving averages okay and this is actually a clear uh, sort of signal because we have got prices coming down dominated by a very big large uh, candle here and then it corrected itself but it bounced off from one of the moving average and that happened to be the 50 exponential moving, moving average and that is a sign that prices could actually go even lower here all right so if I just zoom out a little bit you could see that play of price action there and then we've got more prices. That angle itself is really 6 o'clock type angle, but if you're looking at here, we've got a 5 o'clock here, but then anything that's recent is actually signaling more strength to the downside for gold, okay? Now, the 4-hour chart or the medium term, we have got again prices under all three lines here, okay? And then what do we see on the daily chart? On the daily chart, only in the longer term, from the daily, from the weekly, as well as the monthly, we have got signals that they may be a sort of push, but not just now, just not the time yet for gold. 
okay it is still has got some time for us traders here retail traders we need to to, to take it from time to time stage by stage okay so we're looking at a one hour chart here let's move on to the very short term five uh, minutes sort of chart we've got price all the way coming down there's a bit of a appreciation or correction at the moment here as well as you can see prices are coming upwards okay then we move on to the one hour chart we could see that prices are weakening okay prices working that means they they, they may be a, a bit of a upward move expected but not probably not that uh, big of a move okay because we're looking at all the upward big moves potentially could happen in the longer term okay not uh, longer term meaning from you know about a week two weeks or so right up to a month or so perhaps it can even happen in another couple of days or so but all that depends on how the market uh, moves so what sort of impact does it actually have uh, to the market now here we've got something potentially going on at the moment from a from a from the perspective of a um, uh, patterns uh, trader I do see a sort of an M like pattern here I wonder whether you guys can actually spot that we've got an M like pattern that's a uh, that one there and downwards okay so we have got potentially prices reaching around here and then coming back up but let us just cl clarify that again let's look at that from straight lines perspective okay now we have got let's say we have got an a b c d sort of move here and anything before that that is actually a, a your x to a okay so i'll just pull anything from here to here making that my x to a that's for the one hour chart for gold okay now we pull that one all the way down here because that's where the most significant correction is let's say okay all right then I'll pull that to there all right okay now I'll just pull that one here and make your B to C move there okay so let me just clarify that again we've got an X here let's just label that so I've got X okay then I've got a all right I've got B and then C and then I've got my D anyway here potentially okay now I'll just uh, just use Fibonacci at the moment before that I'll mark that potential D to be here now how did I actually get that is my a B equals C D okay now um, let's look at my A to B and let's look at where C has actually landed we could safely say that C landed really close to the 61.8 area okay so let us do that let's uh, let's forecast the D using Fibonacci so we'll just pull the B to the C and because the C landed close to the 61.8 we then could say that the D potentially uh, could uh, land at the 1.618 area which is here okay so I'll just mark that as well as my potential D so I've got two um, two potential areas uh, either the 1242.20 area or the 1237.25 area okay so this is what I do now the other thing I could also do is that when I pull my X to A all right I usually look at my 78.6 or my 61.8 and I look at my 78.6 and 78.6 is really close uh, to where I've marked the two other lines earlier on so what I do then is because they're quite close I'll just mark that okay I like to pull my X to A and then I, I use that as a another zone a, another additional line to the zone okay and what I do then is I'll just pull my X again to C as well okay so I pull X to A and I pull X to C okay this is just to get a zone an area and I usually look at my 78.6 or my 61.8 and I prefer the 78.6 in this uh, area because they're all in between the areas that I've drawn the lines earlier on 61.8 is too far away here so what I do then is I take away that Fibonacci okay and I look at all these lines I've drawn uh, to be quite close to one another and that creates a zone for me we call it a PRZ a potential reversal zone so then what I do is I mark it using a sort of a triangle a zone blue in color here it just gives me an idea visually of 
where would the price reverse and go upwards so what that means is because this is an M like pattern there's a potential for prices now prices uh, Price price is at one two four six point one five one four more or less. Okay, so there there still is a potential for prices to come downwards and play around this zone and then bounce upwards. Okay, anywhere uh, uh, in uh, in this area in the, within this zone. Okay, if at all prices happen to penetrate through this zone, you still have to watch out because sometimes it, it, it comes down, it corrects itself, and it comes down even lower. Okay, so you would need to be very, very careful with this kind of move. But uh, most likely, because the C is quite a high probability sort of ratio, and we look at it, and it seems to be, uh, you know, playing out quite well. It's under all three lines. We we do. Uh, I just want you guys to be aware that um, there is a potential for a upward move. Uh, some of you guys may be selling and thinking that you know the trend could actually be guessing, guessing that the trend could actually be stronger. Try not guessing it so much. Look at it and always look at the risk area. And there are risks for prices to bounce upwards. If it does actually bounce upwards, uh, you're looking at a potential of it. Uh, reaching to an area that is about 50 plus percent or so of C to D. Okay, that means half of this length, half half of this length. Okay, so half of that length, if I uh, take that as a just an approximate sort of thing, if I pull that to here, I've got about. Hmm, that's, I'm not sure that that's correct. 400 plus there in terms of pips. So it's 400 plus. So we're looking at half of that. Uh, we would say close to 150 to 200 potential to the upside here, but that would bring you to about 1263, 1267 or so. Uh, and you want to always look left and look at where prices have actually concentrated as well. So you've got a concentration of price in this area here. So that would be in between 1267 and 1263 so that could be a potential of prices coming downwards play around this zone bounce up to the 1263 to 1267 area so that's not a very significant rise up but a potential for it to go upwards so let's just wait and, and look at it at this moment of time we've got 1245 from 50 60 and it's actually playing about psychological level so let's wait and look at prices going above the 50 area at least okay now once prices have gone above the 1255 or so then you've got more push to the upside all right okay now if at all it does actually go upwards and uh, sort of come around the 1263 area it might actually um, you know uh, try to penetrate through uh, the 200 moving average uh, as well because 200 moving average is uh, one of the uh, highest or strongest one to actually penetrate through because it involves 200 days average movement okay of uh, of, of the pound oh sorry of the gold okay the price of gold so that's basically an, uh, an idea for you on a one hour chart for the gold okay now let us uh, now erase all drawing and we'll look into the four hour chart and just look at what's happening. We do have a, a upward sort of move, okay? And if we go onto the daily chart, yes, there are more uh, potential to the upside. Uh, and we just want to look at how far prices have actually come downwards. But then looking at all these ones with the potential of an upward move, we are looking at a correction uh, here on the one hour chart because if we go in there we've got an upward move uh, not a correction it's more a um, a uh, it's not a corrective sort of uh, move it's a continuation there is a potential continuation to the upside okay but just be aware of how um, further down prices could potentially go okay before going upwards so you've got a, a bit of a a, a uh, an idea that prices if at all was going down more it might come down to about one two three seven area before it actually uh, start going back up again that's for the goal okay all right now we are looking into um, the oil at the moment as well and let's look into the oil
okay let's look into oil we have got earlier on you guys have actually looked into some ideas of prices uh, falling due to fundamentals due on um, prices with uh, Syria and prices uh, sorry your news with the Syria and other factors as well so that hinted us of a downward sort of momentum but let's look at uh, look at it uh, for ourselves and zoom out first and look at behavior of prices okay here itself this area look at it look at how it potentially we have got a downward um, move that is actually happening due to the momentum because we have got that angle there look at that angle it's a six o'clock sort of angle but it's got a bit of a challenge here meaning prices is actually challenging at 200 uh, exponential moving average that's probably where prices for oil is actually bouncing up or bouncing off from as you can see look at that that's your 200 exponential moving average and look at what's happening with prices and what's happening with the candle now we've got prices at 47.54 54 55 is really close to that psych, psych level as well the psych level of 50 okay so if at all um, based on the news that you've got downward sort of move we want prices to fall firstly under the 50 meaning 47.40 and 47.30 and lower and lower then we have got more confidence to the downside here it's very very risky move because prices is just playing within uh, uh, you know in between the lines and also bouncing off or touching just that 200 moving average now, 200 moving average is a heavy exponential moving average that needs to be penetrated with a long candle a longish candle comes down and penetrated through will give you more idea more uh, a more confidence that uh, we have got more bearish uh, uh, what do you call that momentum if we look left with the prices that's happening now we have got a little bit of price concentration area here and we do also have that that support area here which has actually uh, pushed prices up so what we do then is we'll just draw a zone here okay based on that uh, bearish candle in, in 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 the middle and draw it based on the wick and that is basically your zone so, okay so that zone there would be a zone to signal to you if at all prices go under that zone under that purple line below then you've got more confidence to the downside if at all it bounces a bit further with 4760 and above then you've got more uh, momentum to the upside but here itself we have got more hint that prices would actually go up uh, first before it actually come down more but if at all we see a, a strong candle penetrating through this zone sooner than expected then we've got more potential straight away for a downward move to happen faster okay now here itself we have got upward momentum for our chart upward momentum we've got the whole angle here we've got prices here challenging that 50 moving average okay we go on to the daily chart we've got more strength to the upside so here it may be very very tricky with oil despite what's happening with the news when we look into the chart we look into the pattern from medium to daily signaling upward momentum upward sort of move okay let's go on to what's happening now on the five minute chart for oil on the five minute chart for oil we indeed we have got downward sort of momentum okay it's all under all three lines when we go on to the one hour chart we still have got downward momentum but it's challenged so here it's really tricky for oil maybe something else would actually pop up in terms of news or so because here we need to be really reserved, really watching out with what's going on with the news does not really comply 100% of the chart at the moment when we look into the chart and the price and the and the play of price action it is giving us more hint to bounce upwards so let us actually be very careful with oil trading let us have more um, a confidence through the price action once prices have actually gone above and bounces off that and gives you more idea of longish candle to the upside okay because anything could actually happen at this moment of time because it's a very very sensitive area that the price is trading at the moment for oil okay all right now we've got GBP covered let's just quickly look into the dollar versus the yen all right we do have 
some sort of a on the one hour chart for the um, US dollar versus uh, the yen it's very clear we have got a lot of challenges a lot of obstacles to the downside that means there's a lot of a lot of support Port X actually happening on the 200 moving average. We've got a few candles actually gathering and challenging the 200 moving average, and that's usually a sign that prices would love to go up more than going down because this is actually what's going on with the candles itself, price action itself. Okay, we have had a uh, a lot of uh, downward movement. Okay, we did actually have got a lot of downward movement. We had, um, we we did actually see that we've got the bearish candle uh, in play, or they are actually in control. But then something happened once it, once prices have actually um, reached the 200 moving average. So what you do is that if you want to draw a, a resistance zone or a support zone, support resistance zone, then you want to look left. You look at. Uh, potential areas where prices have actually concentrated on okay so this is very important so let's look at prices look at the prices now okay we've got an area of concentration here area of concentration here we've got areas of concentration here as well now I've got areas of concentration here but let me use this zone here I draw onto the uh, candle with the longest wick longest body and then I take that body and I use the wick of that. So I've got a zone. Now this is a zone that prices is actually trading in. It's in between uh, that price 109.55 uh, to 10922 or 23. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that it's probably best for us to wait until prices have actually gone above this zone here. That's your the window of the zone, okay, on a one hour chart. So best to wait until price goes above further up or downward, then we get a clearer direction. That's your bearish direction here, down. Okay? These are the bulls area here. Alright, so just wait and see and see uh, look at what what prices are playing at because this is also a bit of a tricky thing at the moment with the dollar versus the yen. Okay, anything could actually happen. Let us just Erase all drawing. Let's get a bit of clarity based on the four hour chart. And look at what's going on here in the four hour chart. We have got more play to the upside for the dollar. Okay? The dollar versus the yen, even on the four hour chart, we have got prices just concentrating there. Look at the price action, look at what's going on, look at how prices is just you know not penetrating through but trying to find support up even though you've got more candles coming down so this is a tricky area let's just wait and not uh, uh, look at uh, anything at the moment in terms of buying or selling because on the dollar versus the yen we've got prices 109.41 if you would like now it has actually definitely gone under the 50 so there are more more likelihood of prices just coming downwards uh, because it's gone under the 50 side number so there are some more momentum there are more momentum left with uh, with coming downwards first but again we also have the line here for it to bounce off here so let's just wait and see it's actually not really clear because we've got the three lines are entangled again together it's not clear USDJPY okay here on the daily chart it's a little clearer because we have got very nice lines to the downside so again if you're looking at the four hour chart and then we turn into the daily the daily gives us more signal to the downside clearer momentum to the downside compared to the uh, lower time frame so yes we've got more depreciation of the dollar versus the yen expected because we see a lot of challenges a lot of resistance resistance got loads of resistance in this area too resistant okay resistant the flow is to the downside there is actually a bit of an angle to the five o'clock angle as well so to the long term USDJPY is looking like we've got more room to the downside okay for the longer term all right guys let's just uh, erase all drawing let's look at the Australian dollar and see what's going on with the Australian dollar versus uh, the dollar okay um, firstly I'll just clear out all the object lines first okay let's look at all these one here let's look at what's going on here okay 
Now again, we've got resistance uh, prices under the uh, under the uh, three moving averages. Let's just go very quickly to the. Um, uh, five minute chart and see what's going on there. Uh, we have seen a bit of a downward sort of momentum on the one hour chart but there seem to be a bit of a correction to the upside. Okay, that correction, let's just, just check. Um, there's a bit of a pattern here on the AUD on a short term five minute chart very very quickly. I see a move like this. Okay, right. I see a zap like pattern uh, brewing potentially. Uh, let's see if I take that one up here, okay, I take that up here, alright, I use that angle here and I make that parallel, meaning that length and that length could similarly be uh, a potential Z-like pattern, okay, which means if prices does reach this angle around here, it might just come downwards, but let's look at whether or not this line here is close to the 50 Fibonacci level. Okay, it is not too bad. It's quite close. We've got it here. Okay, prices here. All right. Okay, so yes, this could potentially be a Z like pattern, which actually means once prices have space to go around here, you might just make a downward move. And that downward move is usually about 50% of that move here. So that's my A. Okay, that's my B. This is a bearish Z-like pattern. That's my C and the D is around here. Okay, so that means A, B, B goes down to C, corrects upwards. It's a potential to call to come down. And as you can see, that area that I have drawn are you know they're quite close. They may be challenging the the 200 moving average here. So there is a potential of prices uh, making a little bit of a move upwards on the short term, but then the direction is on the downside. Okay, All right. Let us very quickly, oops, sorry about that. Just clear that away. Okay, so on the short term, upward move right up to that angle here at between 0 0.7, uh, double two seven or so, okay, to seven double two four or five, okay, around that area before it comes down. Let's now look into the one hour chart. Let's look at how that pattern plays there. As you can see, we are looking at a one hour chart. Can you see that uh, we do have a bit of strength of candle, okay, uh, going to the upside? And if it does go to the upside, it, it you know, it didn't even uh, touch the uh, the 50 area and would actually come down and that would actually comply or confirm a sort of a downward move so that Z bearish Z pattern does actually comply or or uh, in confluence with the current trend the current trend is actually looking like it's on a downward move and as you can see prices is just playing above in and out but we want to look at prices reaching that level first and then more strength to the downside but let us just wait for prices to go uh, above the 20 or 30, uh, 20 area above more so we could actually make that move and once it reaches that move, if, if it does, then you've got a safer uh, sell downwards. Okay, at this stage, perhaps you just want to wait first because we've got a lot of confusing candles going on at the moment. Okay, now we have got more strength to the downside. So overall, uh, from the one hour, four hour and the daily chart we have got more strength to the downside for the Australian dollar versus the dollar okay now some of you guys have actually asked me about the USD versus the CAD as well okay uh, we've got loads of upward movement expected for the US dollar versus the CAD as you know uh, we've got lots of strength to the uh, with the dollar but th this does not mean that we have got all good news for the dollar or the United States because sometimes there has you know it has actually happened before in the past when we have got even a crash is about to happen we've got price all going haywire to the upside first before the crash happens so never actually just trust what you read or or what you um, know of the market from anyone because we need to look at that uh, for on you know with um, for ourselves first before we do any sort of evaluation and in this case we have got a bit of a challenge here uh, 
uh, on the on the long term, of course. But then, if we move lower, we have got more clarity that there are still more strength for the dollar. Okay, in this case, dollar versus the cat, more strength from short term to medium. But we don't want to put uh, too long a trade to be open for the long side for the dollar. Uh, best not to do that because it's really very risky. Best best for you to look into lower time frame and trade in stages and look at patterns in smaller time frame. Confirm that with patterns on longer time frame, but you want to trade it with smaller patterns in smaller time frame. But you use bigger patterns to actually confirm it. Okay, here in this case we have got. Let's say you're looking to the four-hour chart and you're expecting an upward sort of movement. If I pull this one here for the USD versus the CAD, uh, we do have a little bit of a 38.2 sort of correction here. Okay, so that's your A. Let's say B, C, and then D is somewhere up there. So let's make a bit of a let's do a bit of a forecast on where D could potentially go to, and that is the area there, and that would be close to one double three two zero area, and that's also a psychological level here. So again, let's wait for that to actually happen, and perhaps one when that does happen, it's got a correction area uh, above this level. Okay, all right, guys. Let's just. Okay, so I've covered uh, a few pairs already, including oil and gold. Uh, let us very briefly look into the euro versus the dollar as well. It's the major pair. Let's just. I don't see my euro versus the dollar here. Uh, I've got the euro versus the dollar. I think we did cover that very briefly earlier on. Um, there's more uh, more news uh, on the on the euro and uh, euro stocks are tumbling and a lot of things are. Uh, I mean, in terms of um, in terms of the cycle, whether it is inflation, deflation, and all that, uh, what's happening in uh, the UK is actually inflation but low inflation. But what's happening in Europe at the moment is actually deflation. All right, so deflation, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, depreciation of the value. Uh, of the currency, okay, and currencies involved in in euro as well. So this is uh, the thing that we need to be aware. Of. But as of uh, two hours ago or so, we also have had news talking about how about 11 billion will be released for Greece as of tomorrow uh, for the debt crisis and things like that. Okay, so that might then pump in more money for euro. Perhaps euro will actually make a bit of a correction based on that money that is coming in. So we need to be aware of this so let's look at what's going on with the euro at the moment uh, for the euro we're looking at yes we've got more downward sort of move now this could actually be more downwards and not up at all uh, depends on what happens tomorrow depends on whether fear overcomes the flow of money or um, sometimes if just the flow of money doesn't actually win the game sometimes it's the uh, feelings by majority of investors and the pulling out of current investments in that currency that would matter much more than money coming in okay because usually the money going out is based on fear that's why people say fear is actually the governing feeling uh, or emotion in trading okay because it's the most powerful one all right so we have got a lot of uh, corrections here we've also got concentration area that is actually bouncing off from so this is what we want to look at. We're looking at prices at 1193. Okay, it's very close to the 00, zero site number above. But then, if we want prices to come down a bit more, give you more confidence of prices coming down, you want prices to go under the 80 level, so 1.1180 and below. So 1.1170 1 or so by tomorrow. If you look at that, then you've got more chances to the downside for the euro versus the dollar. Okay, but at this stage, Let's look at the four-hour chart. We have got more uh, room to the downside, um, even though we've got money or um, the the uh, debt crisis money. We call it for Greece to be released uh, tomorrow. We're still looking at lots more momentum to the downside. So there's. Uh, it looks to me like there are more fear and uncertainty in the market by investors uh, and they're not really paying much attention to the flow of money coming in tomorrow 11 billion or so so let's let's be very careful with trading the euro versus the dollar at this stage okay because we have got a bit of a clash of emotions okay whether it is greed or whether it is fear we are not in one side of the emotion as yet by traders okay 
So if we go on to the daily chart, again daily chart might give you a bit of an explanation. There is a bit of a long term sort of halt there. It's a bit of a long term support uh, going on there. Okay, uh, so this is not a clear fall. There is no clear fall for the euro yet, so be very, very careful. If there are clear fall of the euro, meaning that prices uh, based on the one hour, four hour and daily chart are all under the three EMAs and then you've got all the very clear direction, then it's a very, very strong signal to the downside for the euro. But at this moment, there's lots of uncertainty still going on and that could also be part of the Brexit because the, you know um, uh, because of the UK being in within that zone as well and uh, they have got lots of challenges in dealing with uncertainty and that uncertainty is also sipping into the uh, European traders too so I want you guys to be very aware of uh, trading the euro and the pound very carefully okay even the uh, Swiss, Swiss franc as well because they're all sort of connected in within the business lines of doing things in within these zones okay all right so that's basically it I guess for uh, what I could share with you today we have got the US indexes 30 let's just look at coffee let's just uh, go through some of the things Euro JPY we've got as you can see Euro JPY has got more and more um, depreciation of its value on even the daily chart look at the daily chart once you look at the daily chart you look at strongish candle happening on the daily chart that gives you a lot of signal that that sort of move is also happening on the lower chart okay that's the reason why we would like to use a longer time frame to look at just the behavior of candles at the moment okay and you can see much more depreciation going on for the euro okay even from 30 minutes we've got a five minutes here as well and you can see that you've got very clear sort of movement to the downside for the euro versus the yen even so that also happens at but we've got more uncertainty in the euro versus the dollar all right so uh, look at um, pairs or charts that give you a little a bit clearer uh, picture of what's going on in various time frames as opposed to something uh, a pair that is giving you a lot of um, clashes in terms of information or divergences okay uh, means uh, very mixed sort of info like what we've actually seen on the euro USD earlier on okay all right I've got some questions here all right let's go Yes, of course. Uh, Michael, how are you doing? You've got a question on the Euro versus the CAT on the daily. Yes, let's go and look at the Euro versus the CAT. Give me a second. So we've got Euro. All right. I don't actually see the Euro versus the cat here. I do. Yes, sorry about that. Got a bit mixed. Okay. So let's look into the Euro versus the cat. Now, here itself, looking at the one hour chart, we have got prices. I mean, prices itself, 4705, really close to the zero, zero. Prices looks to me like it's falling here. But let's just apply very quickly the indicators. Just give us a bit of an idea on trend. I've got the 200 here applied. Then we've got trend moving average let's go to the 100 okay and the lightest color being my 50 moving average okay all right there we go now as you can see prices um, whether it's respecting or it's actually bouncing off from that 50 moving average we don't really know it yet to make that as a support let's just look at how prices sort of weakening shortening in terms of the candle it might find support here we don't actually know that yet but if at all it wants to find support and it has got chances to go further up let's look at prices going above the 20 okay meaning 1.47 20 20 and above give you more strength to the upside so we've got to wait here we're looking at candles could easily just come through it now once it goes under 4700 or at 4690 and below then you've got more strength to the downside so here it's 
because it's too close to the site number zero zero as well we want to wait and see and look at the behavior of the candle and the euro cat okay this is on the one hour chart on the daily chart Michael we've got loads of resistance going on as you can see we've got a lot of technical potential resistance here we, we see that the candle is actually bouncing off from the um, uh, 50 moving averages here so let's create a zone once we create a zone here based on let's say that longest candle that longest body that I can see based on that candle here okay all right and let us then do that based on the week okay so we then get a sort of um, zone that zone is between 1.4784 and 1.4816 and they are both both prices are really really close uh, to these uh, respective psychological level okay so here we want to look at trend first we could see that the downward movement we've got the flow to the downside why we've got higher high, high, sorry lower highs here okay so what we want to do is to wait uh, there more more likelihood of euro falling down or lower against the Canadian dollar okay uh, why I say that is because we're looking at the prices and we're looking at challenges across here it needs a longish candle to penetrate through that zone to give it more price uh, potential to the upside but again that could just be a uh, correction here you know uh, sort of a correction to come down more so let's let's just wait and see until prices give us much more at this moment of time even on the daily it's actually too unpredictable too uncertain why we've got prices as as you can see a lot of candles are in between all three lines and the three lines the three moving averages itself are actually trending or trading towards a three o'clock sort of angle and this is actually very unsafe uh, timing to actually consider your trades okay if we go on to the five minute chart we probably have got clearer picture on the downside um, move but again seem to have correction to the upside but again it's not actually giving us a very solid sort of decision we've got more on the upside uh, on the one hour chart but again if you're looking into the daily chart I see a lot of resistance area here and you need to clear that zone off first go under that area under the 50 moving average here at 14656 that means 14650 and above and below or 1.4640 and below then we can see uh, a stronger clearer downtrend momentum at this stage is too much uncertainty too much uncertainty in this area okay it's all in within this zone so it's too much uncertainty all right guys hope that's clear for you guys and I think uh, that's all I have uh, time for you guys for today and um, if at all no more questions uh, I can find I would then uh, would like to thank you guys for today's for attending today's Monday's webinar and uh, hopefully I've answered some of your questions and also give you some trade ideas on some pairs let me just check on some questions there no problem Carmelo thank you very much for that all right guys so I uh, hope I've answered that uh, right Michael uh, for you on your daily chart on the uh, on this pair on the euro uh, versus the cat so um, yeah that's all I have for you guys and I would like to thank you and uh, see you again next Monday for you guys who are going to be attending the third part of the um, geopolitical trader series we'll see you tomorrow uh, that will be at uh, 6 p.m. let me just think 4 p.m. GMT so 6 p.m. my time tomorrow uh, for Mondays will be as usual uh, 2 p.m. GMT or 4 p.m. my time okay all right all right thank you very much Michael all right guys I want to wish you guys uh, happy pipping okay uh, all the best and uh, if there's any questions uh, feel free to email me at Kenny at um, orbex.com all right thank you guys once again bye bye Ami, Ami, our actual, 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 act